Welcome back to the 6th Gear Garage. Today, I'm going to show how to remove an 84-88 Toyota Pickup Hilux and 84-89 Forerunner entire dashboard assembly from top to bottom. Today, we're taking out everything, including the main dash frame. You'll need to do this to replace the heater core or other HVAC components. Only basic tools are needed. I'll put a list in the description. It's not too difficult, just time consuming to locate all the screws and bolts, and I'm about to show where all of those are. Let's start with the driver's side. There's a screw here on the bottom left, another Phillips screw on the bottom right, an angled Phillips screw on the top left above the cluster, and another angled Phillips screw on the top right. And then there's one last Phillips head screw on the outer left edge. And that's it. This round trim pulls right off. If your Toyota has buttons for power options, you'll need to unplug those switches from the back first to pull off this trim. Next, there are two screws on the bottom left of the radio console. Then there's one more on the lower right corner. Next, pull out the ashtray just like this. There are two screws, one on each side, that need to come out. And there's also one more hidden screw up on top at an angle. When those three screws are out, you can pull the sleeve and it'll come right out. Pull forward on the console trim bezel and it pops right out. Be sure to detach the wiring for the 12 volt cigarette lighter. If your truck is automatic or a 4Runner, you might have other electrical buttons to unplug from the back. The radio is simple just two screws to remove on each side. Then unplug the harness and antenna from the back and it's free. Next, let's remove the driver's knee panel. There's a Phillips screw on the top here, one on the far right, one on the lower right, one to the right of the hood release, one above the illumination knob, and one more on the lower left by the speaker grill. When the knee panel comes out, be sure to unplug any harnesses from the back side, like the one for the illumination knob. Next up is the HVAC face. These plastic knobs pull right off of the metal sliders. These faces get brittle with age, so carefully pry it forward. I like to use a 90 degree hook. Pull a little bit on each side, and it doesn't take much force at all to pop it off. There's one screw for the quartz clock. Reach from behind and give it a push, and it pops right out. All 84 to 88 Toyota trucks have the harness and plug for a clock, so the quartz clock is an easy upgrade for a bare bones model pickup. Right speaker grill. There's a screw on the lower right, and then another on the top left. Then pull down and give it a wiggle, and it should pop out. Oh great, another mouse truck. They seem to love the right side of the dash for some reason. Right up there. And the empty space above the right speaker is where I found a lot of mice nests. All right, on to the dash pad. Let's start by removing these five Phillips head screws along the bottom edge. Then there's a hidden 10 millimeter bolt on the top left. This dash vent needs to come out because there's a 10 millimeter nut behind it. There are four metal spring clips, two on top and two on the bottom that when pressed down from the dash opening, it'll allow the vent to slide out. I'm being careful not to put too much pressure on the vent because this old plastic gets really brittle with age. I release the top spring clips here to show you the little metal tabs that lock the vent into the dash opening. To press in the bottom spring clips, I'm using a more slim pick tool. There, I heard a click and it's free and the last clip is right below the top left one if you get a stubborn clip there's another option i'm using a 90 degree hook pick tool and i'm pulling the pivoting part of the vent out of the outer vent frame now i can see the clips and it's this guy right here that's making this video so long what i did was bend the exposed tab forward a little and then I could push the clip through the vent and release it. I'd rather bend a clip back into shape than replace a cracked vent. 
getting to this bolt usually isn't this difficult, but I'm showing the worst case scenario here. Looking through the vent opening, and I can see the last 10 millimeter nut to remove. And there it is. But first, I need to remove the glove box. There's a screw on the bottom hinges, right and left side. Okay, got those screws out, and now the glove box is free to come out. You'll have to squeeze the sides in a tiny bit so that those rubber stoppers will clear the opening. I've got a 10 millimeter socket on some extensions and I'm going up inside the dash to reach that nut. I'm going to go in front of the ductwork. Oh, there it is right there. Now the cover is finally free. I already sold the column from that truck, so I'll show you how to remove that on my 87 pickup. There are seven screws total. Three of them hold the clamshell together, and the other four connect the bottom half of the clamshell to the column. All seven need to be out for the trim to be removed. I'm on the last screw, and the lower cover is starting to drop. There we go. Be sure the top cover goes around the ignition when you pull it off. Here's a better look inside to see the screws. This corner one and these two on the middle connect the top and bottom pieces. Then the other two here and two here are what attaches the lower part of the cover to the underside of the column. The four smaller screws go into the column and the three bigger screws attach to the upper trim cover. Next, I'll remove the steering wheel. On the back of each spoke, there's a Phillips screw holding on the center cover. Remove both of those and the cover comes right off. Be sure to disconnect the wire for the horn. To remove the steering wheel from the column, you'll need a 19 millimeter socket. With an extension and a ratchet, crack it loose and it spins right off. Now they sell steering wheel pullers to take these off, but I find it's pretty easy to use my hands. Watch this. And done. These column switches need to be out of the way. You can see there are one, two, three, and four screws holding it to the column. Before I pull it off, look underneath here and I'll release this harness from the metal tab. Then there are two more small Phillips screws holding the black harness plug here. And two more holding on this main plug. Now I can pull this harness down. This truck has two big plugs and a small white one to unplug. Here's what I'm left with and now I can remove the whole assembly. That's as far as I need to go on the column. So now let's remove the gauge cluster. There's four Phillips head screws holding the cluster to the dash frame. Next, I've got to unhook the speedometer cable. Normally, I'd sit in the car and do this by feel, but it's easier to see from the outside. So I'm reaching over the top of the cluster, and there's a little white clip sticking out on the side of the plastic connector on the cable. Just reach down there and give that clip a squeeze, and the cable will release. Here's a better look at that cable and clip. Now I have just one, two, and three harnesses to unplug. And the cluster is free. Now I'm down to the dash frame. I'll start with this 10 millimeter bolt on the top left. Then another one on the right above the speaker opening. And another below the speaker on this black bracket. Over on the left side of the bracket, there's another. I just took out the three Phillips head screws that hold the HVAC to the back of the dash frame. It's just sitting loose back there now, not attached to anything. Right above the steering column, there's another 10 millimeter bolt, another on the lower left, below the speaker opening, and one more right above the speaker opening. I removed the hood release with these two Phillips head screws. Now push this plastic piece out of the slot and slide the cable out. That's it. I'm getting these cluster harnesses out of the way and the whole dash frame comes right out. Here's a look at the bare dash frame. 
Here's what's left inside. I have full access to the wiring harness, HVAC ductwork, and heater core. Thanks for watching. If this helped you, please give a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more how to videos and project vehicle updates here at the 6th Gear Garage.